one-stop shot. Following the success of our cheap rifle item a few weeks ago, we look at all-inclusive package deals. Nice one, Sunshine. We visit the estate mixing solar panels and shotguns. Plus, stay sharp. How to sharpen your knife using stones. We have news, we have hunting YouTube, plus some magic moments from the Game Fair 2017. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Today I'm talking about rifle packages. Manufacturers, importers will just drag in various components, put it together and say this is what we think. And some manufacturers do it all in-house. They have their own in-house kind of optics companies and bits and pieces. So they're all slightly different. So what they're doing is taking the stress of shopping away from the hunter and say, right, this is what we think you should have. For instance, I've got the Remington here, the Remington 783, fairly new on the marketplace. It's a rifle package. And what you get for that is a rifle, mount and a scope and it's £555 retail. Retail. Moving up from there, you've got uh, the Hauer, for instance. You can go on the Hauer website and you can pick a barrel, stock, caliber, the scope, the mounts, the moderator, the bipod, and also a hard case. It starts at £1,000. And then you move further up market to a, the Zauer package, which is £2,000. So some are on the budget side, some are just giving you the whole kit, Zara have put together this package saying, come on, we recommend this. So I think what we need to do is just have a look at it in a bit more detail. This is the keeper package from Zara. They say, open the box and off you go, sir. So this is a Zara 100 XT. I pick out some really expensive rifles and sometimes they really get me going, sometimes they don't. And for some reason, I actually quite like this rifle. Um, it just feels really, really nice. It's short, it's compact, it's a 20-inch barrel. Um, it feels rather good, actually. So I think what I need to do is actually just take this apart and have a look at the quality of this rifle. Aluminium, alloy, trigger guard and, and base plate. That, that feels really, really good. So what's unusual about the uh, SAW 100 and the 101 range is the way the action's bedded to stock. It's, it's got a small nut which you unscrew and out it pops. It's unusual but it's just the way they do it but it actually makes it a very very tight and rigid system. So here's the barrel, I say 20 inches long, quite chunky, it's quite short. I like that. I just love short rifles especially when I come vomiting my shooting fox in and out of my pickup or the tractor. I want something short and pointable and that fits the bill quite nicely. So you've got a, a Minox here, Minox ZX5, 3 to 15 by 56. The scope and the mounts come together, they've actually already been fitted properly so obviously you should check it but they come as a fitted unit. So take all the hassle away of actually trying to align a scope which some people find really hard work. So it's all put together professionally and just clicks onto the action and it's all ready to go. Nice uh, size objective lens, 3 to 15, and these are guaranteed apparently for, for 30 years. So, um, so yeah, a very, very respectable quality scope with very, very good glass as well. This is the Barton Gunworks moderator, which is, um, comes with the package. First impressions are it's quite light. It's bushless, look at that. So none of this um, sticking a bush in the back of it, which actually has to be modified to your the, the, the diameter of the barrel is bushless, so it just screws on there. You know, the whole rifle is quite short. It feels right. You know, it's a kind of a, a real kind of varmintine kind of gamekeepery gun where it sits in the old pickup and you pick it up and you take a quick fox. You know, so um, yeah, it feels rather good. The keeper package is only available in 223 caliber. It's aimed at that gamekeeper. 
who wants that very, very accurate round to take that long, pesky fox out of night time. You know, maybe two or 300 yards away, perfectly suitable for that. It's an all-round calibre, but the uh, most important thing, it's accurate, it's deadly, and it's the perfect calibre, perhaps, in some ways, for the varminter. In true Blue Peter style, I was at the rifle last night in quite windy conditions. What was quite impressive about this, it came prepared. So all I did was actually alter the uh, zero by an inch up and down a wee bit, and it was, it was spot on at 100 yards. So it's, it's kind of more or less zeroed for you. So that's the consideration. Three types of ammunition here, a 64 grain, 223. Yeah, not bad, it was, I said it's quite windy last night. Uh, 55 grain, the Varmint X, a really good round for foxes. Um, just under uh, half an inch, you know, that's, that's pretty good. And I've got some super performance stuff here. Uh, 53 grain, once again, very explosive bullet. Uh, V-Max as well, so it's got a nice hornady head on that. Perfect for the, uh, the fox. And uh, literally, 0.2 of an inch, it's clover leafing here. Um, and that's in the middle of wind, so out of the box. It shoots less than an inch. It's shooting less than three quarters of an inch. And with the right ammunition, it's down to half MOA. Perfect. It, you can't get better than that. I, you know, that's, that's better than what I can shoot. So the proof's in the pudding, in the eating. There it is. I'm really impressed with this trigger, but it's so crisp. To me, it's nearly the perfect trigger. And this is, you know, in some ways, an entry level rifle for Zauer but it's a very, very nice trigger. I mean, it's up with the much more expensive rifle, so I'm really impressed with it. So, good for Zauer, it's a good unit. Safety, three bits in safety. If you notice the back of the bolt, there's actually a cocking indicator. It tells me when the, when the bolt's actually cocked. If I pull the trigger, it disappears. And the safety itself locks the sear. It doesn't actually lock the mechanism, it locks the sear. So it's a very, very safe safety system on the Sauer 100. So the Keeper package is all about a combination of quality products, I suppose, is the better way of putting it. It's been thought about. Let's use our in-house resources. Let's use a, our really good quality scope, our well-proven mount. Let's put in a high quality moderator and tweak this package a wee bit so it really appeals to that person who wants an accurised rifle. Because this is actually accurised. There's no two ways about it. This shoots half a minute, which for, for this, this money, I suppose, for £2,100, that's not a bad deal for the whole thing. I can shoot foxes. I've shot crows at 300 yards with this last night. It, it, it kind of covers most bases. And uh, this one to me, Perfect timing, it's in the summer, we'd be just combining at the moment. There's a lot of foxes out there, a lot of youngsters need taking out, the gamekeepers are getting fed up, so perfect timing. So let's see if the keeper package lives up to my expectations, because at the moment, to me, it does. Tim showing us a nice package there. Speaking of which, it's what the next man would like you to think too. It's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The silly season is upon us with the national and international press jumping on a golden opportunity to give hunting a beating. Right now, thousands of the best outdoor TV shows are just a click away with My Outdoor TV. Out of the four negative articles in the last three days, the story that's gone global is the UK launch of MOTV at the Game Fair. It's an American subscription channel owned by US billionaire Stan Kroenke. And if like 99.9% .9 of the nation you'd never heard of him, you will have now, as he is the majority shareholder of Arsenal Football Club. Celebs and politicians have all jumped on the bandwagon, calling Mr Kroenke all sorts of interesting things, but more worryingly, using our ill-informed media to spread the anti's gospel. Charlie and other independent commentators like Diggory Haddock have tried to fight the flames. Here's Charlie on BBC Radio Wales with Will Travers from the Born Free Foundation. ...so that we can lay to rest the myth that trophy hunting generates large amounts of money for local communities and for conservation, because it patently doesn't. Have you ever seen Field Sports Channel TV? Me? Yeah. No. Yeah. You've never seen it? No, no I've never seen it. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link, Will. I'll send you a link. It's, very, it's really good. You'll love it. <laughs> 
On a more positive note, we had a great time at the game fair and judging by the packed aisles, so did thousands of others. The official figure is a footfall of 116,326 and we're sure some of them must support Arsenal. While I was enjoying the fair, chatty man Charlie was hosting three days of debate and conversation at the Game Fair Theatre. Nigel Farage was there to kick things off. Well, I'm here at the Game Fair, about to go on to talk about the unbelievable opportunities offered by Brexit. Also making an appearance with the likes of Andy, Roy, Tim and Dom. The biggest audience was for the debate entitled Why Does the BBC Hate Field Sports? Who knows, but we tried to flesh it out. Sticking with fairs and Country Far Live is on at Blenheim Palace between the 3rd and 6th of August. They may ban guns but can't ban the owners, yet, and the National Gamekeepers Organisation and other shooting groups will be there. To be able to use a vehicle where we, we can interact with the 99% to get them from indifference to, oh all right, I think that's a bonus. A man has accidentally been shot in the leg at the Denver gun show. Witnesses have told local media and police that the man was shot by another attendee at the Tanner gun show. Adams County Sheriff's Office said a vendor had a gun discharge and strike another employee. Officials would not say how the weapon went off. The man's injuries are not believed to be life-threatening. A French mayor is claiming that wolves are to blame for wildfires. He says it's because of a big rise in the population, leading to farmers to give up maintaining land where they keep their sheep. The result is the land becomes dry, helping the fires to spread more quickly. More than 8,000 farm animals, mostly sheep, were killed by wolves in France last year, prompting the government to permit the cull of 40 wolves by July next year, roughly 10% of the population. Villagers have been warned as four lions have escaped from the Kruger National Park. Extra caution has been urged as the four male lions have been spotted near Matsulu village outside the park. Rangers are now searching the area and residents have been asked to report any sightings. The incident comes just two months after five other lions escaped. Here are some of the other anti-hunting stories in the press this week. Ken Stalker and falconer Lisa Taylor was slammed in the Daily Star and Daily Mail for giving up shopping at Tesco's in favour of hunting her meat. Sporting agent Owen Beardsmore has been hauled through it for offering feral goat stalking in Wales. The one positive story was in the Sunday Times, reporting that Sir Ian Botham is backing an initiative to feed pheasant soup to the homeless. An American billionaire, no, not that one, is buying up land to try and block hunting. Land fracking king Faris T. Wilkes and his brother have bought a 172,000 acre forest in Idaho what's, what's and they're trying that? to close it to local hunters and walkers. And this video to, shows why, one of their security men confronting a local. Why are you asking for it? Because the company I work for wants us to get it. Why? There are calls to protect a breed of rare Scottish grouse. The population of the Capercaillie, the largest grouse species in the world, has fallen by 50% in just two decades. Conservationists want to take action before the treasured bird is lost. The sharp decline in the numbers of the bird is being put down to climate change, predation, collisions with deer fences and housing development. And finally, to add to this week's media misfires, there's some good news and some bad news. First, the bad news. Scott Rail has banned the carrying of guns on all their trains after a firearm was left in a carriage earlier this year. The good news is that legal firearms can be taken on the Serco run Caledonian sleeper, but travellers need to contact the sleeper's guest service centre and then a letter of authority will be issued. Please let us know if you get any response, as Charlie hasn't. And just to show it's still legal in England, here are some shots taken at Hatfield Station over the game fair weekend. You are now up to date with Phil Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David, and thanks to everyone who took part by coming onto the Game Fair Theatre stage, who came to watch in the audience and who took part there too. I hope it was fun, I hope it sparked some good debate, and I hope it entertained. Now everyone says you shouldn't throw stones in glass houses. Well, should you shoot shotguns next to solar panels? Technology is changing the way we live, but it's not just our tablets, phones and homes. The countryside is also being poured into the digital age. We've come to the biggest solar farm in the UK to see how an estate that offers 30 game days a year deals with the latest addition to the landscape. Dean Strangeway has been gamekeeper at this estate in Hampshire since the plans for the solar farm were passed. 
The first year it was going up was a bit of a, t a challenge because um, there was a lot of disturbance and we were a bit it was a bit scary at times really because it did affect some of the drives because of the disturbance of the machinery and the people but now it's up it's it's blending in quite well and it will only get better with age um, the impact of the solar farm has been um, absolutely fantastic really you know we get a good lot of um, ground nesting birds it's the first year here after speaking to the boss that he's known in a good 20 years that we've had um, broods of lapwings hatch off. We've had five broods of lapwing. Some of the drives are quite close to the solar farm and we, we've never really had much of an issue. Um, the main issue is me pickers up trying to pick up retrieved birds or wounded birds should I say. But we've never had much of an issue. We do stand some guns quite close to the solar farm. Never been an issue with falling shot or anything like that. Never been any complaints. Um, and it just shows that uh, we can run a successful shoot next to one of the biggest solar farms in the UK and I, I invite people you know come and have a look at what we do I think the way things are changing now it, it, you know farms have to diverse shoots have to diverse and everything has to be modern and you just have to adapt with the times because times change year on year. Dean is not alone in having his shooting ground split by acres of panels our own Tim Pillbeam has a rifle range next to over 30 acres of panels in Sussex just to add the range came first and the panels later. From the environmental point of view, diversity point of view, we discussed that actually it's, it enhances the farm. It's incredible difference. Over three years since the farm, the solar farm has been um, laid down, is the, the, the increase in, in uh, fauna and flora has been amazing. But we have to work with it. Uh, we shoot a lot of rabbits on the farm here. We shoot lots of foxes as well. And you had to be slightly mindful that um, these panels are quite fragile. Um, and they're quite expensive as well. So when we do go rabbit shooting around that side, we can't shoot anywhere towards it. Uh, we, are, we can't shoot along the side of it very easily because the ricochet will, could quite easily break a panel. And with regards to foxes, we can't really go any near it. So we're standing on my little range. Uh, I use it for testing rifles, ammunition, firearms, anything to do with hunting. That the actual range itself is actually behind me and, is actually, and the, the panel's over there. So it's very, very safe. It works absolutely fine. Um, it just shows you actually you can work with solar panels and with solar farms because they are just, they are, you know, they're generally put in place which, which kind of work with the, the local environment. For all the positives, there are obvious issues with this much glass. It's a very large target if something does fall from the sky. I had a few friends down and we were practicing with a bow and arrow and for whatever reason an arrow went up in the air and I've never seen it like it, it is the wind took it and it went whoosh, and it landed right in the middle of the solar panel and it shows you that uh, you, got, you have to be careful you know um, that was a bit of a one-off um, but it just shows you have to work with the solar panels with solar farms becoming a more common sight in the countryside, we spoke to the National Gamekeepers Organisation about their views on land being given over to generating solar power. We don't have a specific policy on solar panels, but if anything that is good for wildlife has got to be good for the countryside, as long as it's not taking up too much green space. I know Dean quite well. The farm, the farm Dean's, Dean's keepering on, I grew up on the farm next door, uh, so I've lived there all my life until quite recently. And, and the, the solar part there was controversial, massively. Uh, but speaking to Dean and being going back home, uh, it's been really nice to see uh, lapwings, which I don't ever remember ever nesting there in 40 years. When talking to people who live, work and shoot near the solar panels, the increase in wildlife diversity has been a recurring theme. And that can only be a positive thing. It's a win-win scenario for nature conservation and even for shooting because the, the um, spin-off from this is that if you look at the original habitat of the sites where the solar farms are, uh, they were originally all see rape fields. So first you put a solar farm on and even if you didn't do anything, you'd get the increase in biodiversity immediately within 12 months. Solar panels, like the wind turbines, split opinion. The turbines are often cited as having a negative impact on bird migration and offshore developments blamed for seabed destruction. The solar panels lay a silver blanket over our green countryside, but at the same time provide a small window of opportunity for wildlife to flourish.
Once again we have shooting in the middle of conservation and sustainable countryside use. Next up, how do you sustain and maintain a good edge? So we're just going to go quickly through a sharpening uh, on a Scandinavian edge, uh, just because it takes um, a a bit more skill than the, uh, the pull through methods that you use on uh, micro bevels. Um, so we've got a stone here, this is a combination stone, um, a Japanese water stone, we've got a thousand grit there and then six thousand grit there, um, depending on the state of your knife, so if you've got a big dirty chip out or, or a roll uh, then you might need to drop down to say 400 grit. If you're just touching it up, refining that edge a little bit more then you don't have to drop as far um, or remove as much steel, so you'd start on say a thousand or six thousand grit. So um, it's it's not rocket science. It just uh, takes a bit of sort of practice um, and sort of developing a bit of muscle memory. What you basically need to do is you put the knife on the uh, the stone, drop it onto the bevel, and that's why well, it's easy on on Scandinavian edges because you've got a nice big flat bevel. You can you can sort of feel when it's hard up and flat against the stone and then you just push it up the stone like that make nice sweep make sure you maintain that angle um, all the way up maintain the same angle nice and flat on the bevel and make sure that you catch the entire edge you don't want to miss the top or, or the bottom or anything you want to get the whole edge do eight strokes on one side um, and then flip over uh, and do eight going the other way and that just makes sure that your your bevel doesn't go too far one way or the other um, keeps keeps the uh, keeps it even once you've sort of happy with that edge once you've got a nice uh, even uh, sort of scratch pattern all the way up the knife on the particular grit you're using um, you can just uh, do one stroke very gently on each side just keep flipping it over um, and that, what that does, that minimises the the, the, burr, the wire edge on your on the blade, and then you flip up to the next grade and carry on. You work all the way up through the grits, and then um, you hit the strop, which we'll uh, go through in the next film. From the cutting edge to sharp shooting across YouTube, it is hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. The row rut is all but over in most of the UK. Wiltshire deer stalking is filming enough to make two parts to its latest episode. This is part one. On the other side of the world, New Zealand Backridge Butcher offers pigs, snows, stags, guns, which just about sums up a winter hunting trip to knock down some pork for the family. Over to Texas, where Glenn Guess and his wife Michelle use an electronic caller to call in several groups of hogs in a calling compilation. Glenn's hunting and shooting has been off air for some months, so good to see him back with Crow and Pigeon Shooting Summer 17 over recently cut silage and later Standing Barley. Tweeds and Pheasant sends in his latest film. He sets up in a tram line and has 100 in the bag over Standing Wheat. Here is one reason to control foxes. Anthony O'Duffy, he'd be more appalled if I tried the Irish version of his name, spots a fox and two cubs with half a chicken and films them. Tobias from Red Moose Hunting is out in Sweden after daylight foxes. It's a summer evening and he is doing it to protect small game. And finally, Trevor Farns takes his two girls, Hallie and Kenzie, to northern Idaho on their first hunt ever and watches them proudly as they shoot black bear. It's his father's day treat. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and you can subscribe to us on YouTube there. But best of all, you can pop your email address into our constant contact form on our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Next up, playing us out, images from the Game Fair 2017. But in the meantime, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.